on this model, we can see not just the reproductive tissues, which is what I'm going to talk mostly about, but um, it's actually a little bit of the end of the digestive system. You can see the rectum here. You can see the external anal sphincter muscle here. In fact, this would be the anus right here. Again, this would be the process of defecation. You can also see some structures in the urinary system. So from a, from a more of a posterior view, this would be the right ureter coming down from the right kidney. This would be the left ureter coming down from the left kidney, and that would bring urine to the urinary bladder. In fact, let me open this up for just a moment. So again, this is just a mirror image of each other. But if we look at where that urine is gonna go, you can actually see the opening here of where that ureter is gonna lead down into the bladder. And when someone has to go to the bathroom and empty their bladder, basically what happens is urine travels all the way down this pathway here. But it has to pass through, through several structures. So the first thing it passes through is the prostate gland. Right? Now keep in mind, this is male reproductive tissue. Females do not have a prostate gland. So this is what we call the prosthetic urethra. Then we have another structure of muscle here. This is called the urogenital diaphragm. And at this point right here, we have the membranous urethra. And then if you look here at all of this sort of purplish, bluish, spongy-like tissue. This is what's called the corpus spongiosum. So we pass through, or urine passes through the spongy urethra. So again, from the bladder, it's prosthetic urethra, membranous urethra, and then spongy urethra all the way out until urine exits the body. Now, if we put this back, we can look at reproductive tissues. And I'm going to kind of take it from um, beginning to end. It's kind of easier if you follow the pathway here. So one thing I want to point out is um, externally, right, this side looks a little bit different than this side. Now, of course, in real life, it's not that way. They will look quite similar. But this model does a nice job of showing these cremaster muscles. So these are sort of these stringy-like muscles that you see here. And these help with um, bringing the testes closer to or further from the body because of temperature regulation, actually. So for the process of spermatogenesis to take place properly, um, sperm cells have to grow at a temperature slightly cooler than body temperature, um, which is, again, one of the reasons this is outside of the body. So if it's cold outside, right, these muscles contract and pull the testes closer to the body. If it's warm, these muscles relax and let the testes drop further from the body because again, temperature regulation is, is really important. So you'll see those cremaster muscles on this side. If you look at this side here, you don't see those muscles. You see more of the internal structures. So we have the testes, we have the epididymis, and then we have this structure that we call the spermatic cord. Same spermatic cord that you saw over here. It's just here you can see some of the blood vessels and structures internally. Another structure that's sort of embedded inside here, and actually on this side you can just start to see it poke out right here. This is what's called the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. And these are where sperm cells are going to travel upwards and into the body. So what happens and it has to happen is they've got to pass through this region right here to go into the body cavity. And this is called the inguinal canal. The inguinal canal. Uh, there's an inguinal ligament that runs right through here. But the inguinal canal allows these sperm cells to travel up and all the way into the body, into the lower abdominal region and wrap around, I'm going to show you this side here, but again, keep in mind it's happening over here as well. This is the vas deferens running internally. We don't call it the spermatic cord anymore. Spermatic cord is here, past the inguinal canal, and we're just looking at the vas deferens here. 
So vas deferens or ductus deferens, same thing, comes all the way around to the posterior side of the bladder and it meets up with the seminal vesicles. You'll see one on this side. You'll see the paired structure on this side as well. What you can also see here is the prostate gland. Again, prostate gland is male tissue, not found in females. So this here, if you open this up again, this is where we'll see those sperm cells coming into this region right here. So again, up in past the inguinal canal, all the way around the posterior side of the bladder, and I'm kind of following this pathway down here. So you we actually meet up coming right here at a structure called the ejaculatory duct. That's this right here. From the ejaculatory duct, we also have the combination of seminal fluid, which is coming from this seminal vesicle right here. So seminal vesicle producing seminal fluid or semen meets up and it joins and meets up with the same line that urine traveled down. But again, during sexual arousal, this would be uh, sperm cells now swimming in semen, traveling through the ejaculatory duct, down the prosthetic urethra, membranous urethra, and then spongy urethra. So this is corpus spongiosum. This is corpus cavernosum. So cavernosum, like these tiny little caverns, again, this is what gets engorged in blood during sexual arousal. So semen would travel out this path here. One other structure I want to point out that you can't see on this side, but on the other side of the model, they only put it on one. Um, if you can ignore these little pegs that I'm tapping right here, we can see one more structure right here. So we have the prostate gland, but embedded inside of this urogenital diaphragm is the bulbourethral gland. That's this little one right here. So the bulbourethral gland also makes secretions into this urethra. And then again, seminal fluid is going to travel all the way down and out.